Hello, this is Stokes Baker. I'd like to talk about how to use Microsoft Excel 2013 to do two sample student t-tests. Before I talk about the details of how to use Excel, I'd like to talk a little bit about the theory behind the two sample t-test. In the two sample t-test we have two populations that we're comparing. Each one of those will give us population parameters like a population mean, mu1, and mu2 population standard deviation, sigma 1 and sigma 2. From those two populations we have two samples. From that we get sample parameters such as the sample mean x bar 1 and x bar 2, the sample standard deviation s1 and s2, and each one has their own sample size n1 and n2. Now when we are doing a one sample t-test we compare our x bar to a predicted population mean. In the two sample t-test, we are comparing two x-bars as estimators of the population mean mu. So we can have one of three different null hypotheses. And the two-tailed t-test, where you're going to say the first population has the same population mean as the second sample. So mu1 equals mu2. In the alternative hypothesis that they're not equal. Or you can write it as a one tail test where you say one mean is going to be larger than the other and the alternative hypothesis gives us the opposite directions in the relationship. In the, our two sample t-test we have two ways we can do this. We can assume that the variation between the two populations is the same, in which, say, in which case we would call the equal variance. Or we could not make that assumption, in which case we call that unequal variance. Of the two methods, the latter is the more conservative because you're making fewer assumptions. Thus, what are the assumptions for a two-sample t-test assuming unequal variance? Well, first, that you have random sampling and the sample size is relatively large, preferably greater than 20. When that has occurred, then we can invoke the central limit theorem and assume normality of the distribution of the x-bars. That the observations are independent of each other and finally that the population is not changing during sampling. If we do not assume equal variance to calculate degrees of freedom, uh, VDF, we have to do a weighted average of the two sample size. This big long equation, which is not complicated, it's just a lot of plug and chug algebra, gives us a weighted average of the sample size relative to the variance between the two populations. Because we're using a weighted average, we are going to get fewer degrees of freedom. And as a result, our type 2 error will be larger than if we could assume equal variance. But again, this is the more conservative test. And therefore, it's the one I prefer most of the time. The other way we could do this analysis is to assume equal variance, uh, which can, is, again, it's the same null hypothesis but we need to do some sort of formal hypothesis test to confirm that we have equal variance. Examples of that would be an f-test or a confidence interval of variance. But if we can assume equal variance, then we can use the equation for degrees of freedom as sample size 1 plus sample size 2 minus 2. We lose one degree of freedom for the first population and the second degree of freedom for the second population. That's why it's minus 2. Nice thing about assuming equal variance is one is a much easier equation, but more importantly, we gain degrees of freedom and thus our resolution or our power increases. This is the equation we're going to use to calculate t. x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 and mu 2 divided by uh, the weighted standard error, which is this equation down here. Now, since our null hypothesis is mu 1 equals mu 2, if you take mu1 and subtract mu2, it's going to equal zero. So this equation simplifies to this equation right here. Now the s squares of p is what we call pool variance. And it is a weighted average of the variance based upon sample size. And that's what's being shown right here. In this example, I'm looking at two different varieties of beans. One's an old-fashioned land race, and the other one is a modern inbred variety. And one could ask the reasonable question, do the two types of beans produce equal mass of seed? So we have our seed masses in grams, 
and our null hypothesis is there's no difference in the mean masses of the two varieties and our alternative hypothesis is that there is a difference. I'm going to set alpha at 5% since this is a two-tailed test we're going to do alpha divided by 2 which is 2.5% and now I'm going to do the analysis. Well one of the nice things about Excel is that they do have some built-in functions to do this analysis under their data analysis pack. If you've not installed the data analysis pack, you need to do so before you do this exercise. So to do the two sample t-test, we are going to click data, data analysis, and then we're going to go sc scroll down and these are our different options for two sample t-test. I'm going to first take the most conservatives, which is two sample t-test assuming unequal variance. I'm going to go OK. Ask me for my input range. And in this case, I'm going to do the study of the land race. Then I ask for variable 2. That will be our inbred variety. The hypothesized mean difference is mu1 minus mu2. And that's going to equal 0. So if it's not already done, so you put in 0. Click labels. You always should include the labels in your analysis set alpha at 5% that is the default and then you get to decide where you want the output and let's put the output just under our null hypothesis and the calculations are done this is the equation we're using for T and this is the equation that we're using to do our weighted variances and again one of the nice things about Excel is it does it very quickly here's our two sample means the variance, our sample sizes, the hypothesized mean difference was zero. We actually still got 40 degrees of freedom. Our T statistics is minus 3.48 using this equation. If I was doing one tail test, I would this would be my p-value for one tail test, but I wrote the null hypothesis as a two tail test. As you can see that P is definitely less than alpha and as a result we're going to reject the null hypothesis. So we would say there is a statistically different statistically significant difference in the two average or mean masses of the beans and from this you can see the inbred variety on average produces a larger bean than the older land race. Now, from this analysis, one could see that the variance is actually quite close. And you could go around testing this using a formal hypothesis test to, to confirm that we have equal variance. Um, a good example of the ideal hypothesis test would be a uh, F-test, though a confidence interval of variance could be used too. But we're going to make the assumption that we have equal variance. And so let's do the analysis again. But assuming equal variance. So same process. Data. Data analysis. But this time, going instead of assuming unequal variance, we're going to assume equal variance. OK. Input range, variable 1. It's going to be our land race. Variable range 2 is our inbred lines. Notice that I am highlighting the labels. Click labels. I hypothesize mean difference, which is mu1 minus mu2, is 0. Tell Excel we'll put the output. We might as well put it right here. And we go OK. And again, the calculations are done fairly quickly. That using these equations, which I'm showing down right here, we are able to do our, our analysis very quickly. Our T statistics is minus 3.486, a little bit larger, or a little bit smaller actually. Our two-tailed test is also statistically significant. The notice P in this case is actually a little bit larger. And that's again why is the p largest because we assumed unequal variance so we took a, a hit in degrees of freedom though not a significant one but we still reject the null hypothesis 
because P is less than alpha. Now the third way we can do a two sample T test is to do what's known as a paired observation or a paired T test. And in a paired T test we're doing observations in pairs. For example, uh, in this study I looked at the blood cholesterol of 13 different individuals measured their blood cholesterol before they went on some sort of medication and then a month later after they were on medication. So each person has two measurements before and after. So this would be an example of a paired observation experiment. So we're going to use the same notations to represent our two populations but group one would be the before and group two would be the after. And in a paired observation experiment what you're actually doing is your hypothesis test on the differences, which was delta, which is x1 minus x2. If there's no difference, then x1 and x2 will be the same. So x1 minus x2 should equal zero. So our null hypothesis is the mean of the differences equals zero. Alternative hypothesis, they don't equal zero. You can write this as a one tail test as well. And then this is the equation to calculate t. And notice this is the standard t distribution equation, x minus mu divided by the standard error. But we say x bar delta, mu delta. And the reason for that is that we're actually not doing statistical analysis on the actual cholesterol measurements, but on the difference, which is a t before minus after. So 296 minus 213 equals 83. 313 minus 2 23 equals 90, so on and so forth. So we're doing our statistical analysis on the differences, which I'll highlight in yellow. So in reality, you're doing a one sample t-test. Now the advantage of doing it this way is by subtracting out the before from the after. What you're actually doing is subtracting out sample to sample variation, only leaving behind treatment variation. So yes, you take a hit in degrees of freedom, you lose about half of them, but you greatly reduce S and Sigma and as a result of making this denominator smaller you make T larger so you gain in power. My preferred way of doing a two sample experiment is, is to set it up as a paired observation when possible. Now what are the assumptions of this test? That there's no sampling bias, the population was not changing during sampling, that we have paired observations, and finally, that the distribution of the x bar deltas of the differences is normally distributed. So in this study, I had, which I've highlighted the differences, it's this x delta. Here's the resulting histogram, and it's unimodal and symmetrical, so we, I would say we have fulfilled the normality assumption. So let's now go do the statistical analysis. It's the same process before, data, data analysis. We've got our various options of our different t-tests. We're going to go to t-tests paired to sample means. That's our paired t-test. OK. As for variable 1, that's the before data. Variable 2, that's our after data. Hypothesize mean difference is going to be zero. Make sure I have labels clicked. The default for alpha is 5%, which is what I want. I can tell Excel where to start printing its analysis. We'll do it right under the null hypothesis. And again, the analysis is done reasonably quickly. And as you can see from our two sample t-tests, our p-value is 1 times 10 to the minus 10, so p is definitely small, smaller than alpha. And therefore, we are going to reject the null hypothesis and say the difference is statistically significant. So that's what I have to do for you today. I hope you find this helpful. If you did, please click the like button at the bottom of the screen. Thank you very much.